Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Checks and Balances TV. I'm your host, Matthew J. Reddick, and I'm committed to giving you the truth you need to financially succeed. Today's program is on financial survival tips for a turbulent economy. But first, let's see how today's news may impact your financial future. Well, it's officially a record-breaking winter for the East Coast, with snowfall dumping over 57 inches in New York City alone. It's been a record-breaking season for our economy as well, with the prolonged recession-like conditions continuing to find many Americans looking for cover from the ongoing financial storm. According to a recent CBS poll, almost 60% of Americans believe that we are still in a recession and that a true recovery has yet to begin. January's Consumer Price Index Summary was recently released and it shows that inflation is on the rise up 1.6% from January of 2010 to January 2011. Rising prices for consumer goods have left many Americans anxious about what the future holds. And with the price of a gallon of gasoline reaching a two-year high and the price of food increasing faster than the rate of inflation, it appears to be an uncertain future for sure. Okay, so what's really going on here? Let's check the facts using our checks and balances process. The economy is still a big concern for many Americans. The unemployment rate is still above 9% for the 21st month in a row, something our country hasn't experienced since World War II. And while the recent unemployment figures say unemployment is on the decline, the small drop to 9% in January after just 36,000 jobs were added has left more Americans confused than encouraged. While the unemployment rate is holding, so is the price of labor. Since the demand for labor is less than the supply of the workforce, employers can pay less to willing workers. And according to a recent Gallup poll, the number one concern of Americans now is not the unemployment figure, but rather how unemployment is impacting them personally in the form of low wages and lack of savings. In addition, more than half of the people surveyed said they were worried about losing their current standard of living. Other economic factors impacting one's standard of living, as well as extending these recession-like conditions, include rising interest rates for lending, decreased consumer savings, increased consumer debt levels, the continuation of the housing crisis, and the increase in the price of consumer goods. And although the National Bureau of Economic Research stated that the recession ended in June of 2009, most Americans do not see it that way. In the survey conducted by CBS, they found that 77% of Americans think the economy is as bad as it was two years ago, with nearly a third of them saying that it's actually getting worse. The rising price of consumer goods, coupled with lower consumer wages, has had a significant impact on the quality of life for many Americans. Social Security recipients are reporting difficulty in keeping up with rising monthly expenses, since they have not received a cost of living adjustment, or COLA, in two years now. And according to the Senior Citizens League, 44% of those over the age of 65 have to choose between paying their utility bills and filling their monthly prescriptions due to rising costs. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics released its Consumer Price Index Report, or CPI, for January of 2011. The Bureau, of course, tracks the rise or fall in the price of consumer goods, otherwise known as inflation or deflation. And of course, inflation occurs when prices increase, and deflation occurs when prices decrease. While the overall average increase or rate of inflation is officially 1.6% over the past 12 months, increases for energy and food accounted for more than two-thirds of the increase. Gasoline and fuel continue their strong upward trend with the national average for gas reaching a two-year high of $3.17 a gallon. This is an increase of almost 20% in the last 12 months. The index for food consumed in the home posted its largest increase in more than two years, increasing by 2.1%. All other items besides food and energy have increased by just 1% over the past 12 months, although many other sectors are starting to see increases in prices as well. For example, the price of cotton has risen to a 150-year high, more than double what it was a year ago. 
This increase will obviously be passed on to consumers through increased prices on clothing, with a 10% increase expected this coming spring. And the cost of corn, which is used for both food as well as fuel, has doubled in the past six months alone, from $3.50 a bushel to $7. And corn has many uses today, such as feeding cattle, pigs, and chicken, which in turn feed America, and is used in chips, cereal, and even sweeteners in most soft drinks. Corn ethanol has been added to much of our gasoline today, which then goes into our automobiles. Now the supply of corn is at its lowest level in more than 15 years and the price is likely to continue to increase, a cost that will be passed on to consumers in a number of different ways. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, Matt, what does all of this mean to me? Well, now that we've checked the facts, let's balance this news using our checks and balances process to determine what action you should take today. According to the same CBS poll on the economy and recession, more than half the country, 58%, says America is on the wrong track toward recovery. Despite the fact that some federal officials say the country is on the rebound, many Americans are having a hard time believing it, and rightfully so. The Bureau of Labor says that unemployment is dropping, yet the real numbers do not add up. More than one-third of the jobs created in the last year have been temporary. The average work week for all employees is at a low of 34.2 hours. And among many other reasons to be skeptical, the country needs 130,000 new jobs per month just to keep the rate of an unemployment level. So, a decrease in the unemployment rate of only four percentage points from 9.4% to 9% and just 36,000 new jobs gained is mathematically impossible. Our Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke has continued to express his theory that there is limited fear of inflation. And although the 1.6% rate of inflation is less than the average of 3% we've experienced in years past, lower wages combined with higher priced goods are causing the dollar to not go as far as it used to, which sure sounds like inflation to me. With the rising price of corn and gasoline comes the rising price of food. Food makers and restaurant owners have already said they will be raising prices further this year because they're paying more for corn, wheat, sugar, coffee, and chocolate, all of which are at historically high prices already. The surge in the cost of raw materials and transportation has manufacturers getting very creative as well. Since no one likes a price hike, you're seeing less product in the same size containers. They're using methods such as indents in the bottom of peanut butter containers, whipping the contents of a product like ice cream with air. So you believe you're getting the same amount, but are actually paying for the air rather than the extra ingredients. And reducing the quantity of items in a standard size package, such as toilet paper, going from 352 sheets per roll to just 300. Other manufacturers are reducing the size of packages altogether, such as selling what used to be a 16 ounce pint of ice cream for 14 ounces today, or a gallon of orange juice minus five ounces. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? Unfortunately, the dollar is continuing to weaken. Since last June, the U.S. dollar has fallen more than 8% in value. The early signs of inflation are all around us, including rising prices overall, smaller sizes and portions of consumer goods, and increased investment in banking fees, as we've recently discussed in a previous show. Next, we will most likely see substitutions of high-priced items for lower, less expensive items, and even reduced quality or service due to wholesale prices increasing. These are all telltale signs of inflation. And either way the experts want to define it, inflation comes at a time when most everything increases except your money and buying power. So it's your job to do all you can to weather the financial storm and stretch your dollars as far as possible. You must cut back on unnecessary purchases in order to get ahead. Whether or not the early signs of inflation actually lead to inflation, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, as the old saying goes. So be sure to spend less whenever possible and become a wiser shopper. In this week's CBTV poll, we asked Americans an important question. 
What financial survival tips have you employed in your own life? The options were A, I have set up a retirement account. B, I've cut spending for non-essential items. C, I've cut up my credit cards. And D was, I've started living within a budget. Well, 38% of you said that you started living within a budget, and that's an excellent financial survival strategy. A budget is really the foundation of weathering difficult financial times, as well as flourishing through the prosperous ones. With our economy the way it is, with the weakening dollar and the rising cost of goods, there is no better time to start employing discipline when it comes to your spending habits and practices. And you'll find that if you stick to that budget, surviving these tough financial times will be a lot easier than you think. In our On the Street segment, we travel the country to ask Americans what they think about an important financial topic or issue. For this week's segment, we asked people what they're doing to save money. Let's take a look at what America had to say. What are you doing right now to save money or reduce expenses in this turbulent ec economy that we have today right now? Just watch the pennies, you know. I practice what I call cigar box accounting. Nickel in, nickel out. That's it, it's that simple. What are you and, and your husband doing to save money or reduce expenses during this tough economy that we're in right now? I got a list of stuff. Um, for one, um, I do canning. Excellent. So we also grow some of our own food. And we have two acres, so we grow our own heating wood. Um, don't shop retail stores. Um, I do a lot of horse swapping with my aunts on their clothes. So it's something new for them. It's like, okay, something new for me. Um, and we spend less. You know, there's, there's things that we choose that, what is important? Is it important to make sure that uh, my son is getting, um, you know, getting the experiences in life that he needs? And so we kind of focus it, focus it there. So we kind of just tighten the belt, you know, no $4 lattes from uh, Starbucks. I make them up home. Oh. I make them all up at home. <laughs> you really have a detailed plan. Most people either aren't changing anything or maybe do one thing, but you've got several items that we really do a are lot. making a difference. Isn't yeah, it? we do a lot. Yeah. And what was it, the old saying by Ben Franklin, the penny saved is a... Penny earned. There you go. That's right, save those pennies. Product. Save money in a tough economy. And if I see a penny on the ground, I pick it up. Pick it up. Might pick as well it be up. yours. That's right. The next person's. <laughs> Though sure were some great and creative money-saving tips, weren't they? I think we could all learn something from these penny-pinching techniques. Speaking of, I have a great tip coming up next that will help you save big bucks on all of your future purchases. And now for Matt's weekly tip, tool, or technique. Today's topic is on negotiating your way to huge savings. Now when I say the word negotiating, many people get a negative image of themselves begging a vendor or retail store to give them a break because they don't have enough money in their pocket or bank account to pay the full price. Not true. You must realize that most retail stores, auto dealers, furniture stores, and service providers, such as lawn care, carpet cleaning, roofers, and hundreds of other business people and businesses expect you to negotiate with them. You can control the sales process by being brave and having fun and following these five simple negotiating steps. Here they are. Step number one, jump on the bandwagon. Everyone negotiates their price. Believe it and remember it. Even doctors, dentists, and surgeons will bring their retail price down. Every time you spend a dollar, follow step two. And here's step two. Ask for a cash discount. You might say something like this. Mr. Seller, I'm interested in your product or service, but I want to get the best value for my money. What is the best price you can offer me today if I pay cash? Now, whether you end up paying cash or not really doesn't matter at this time. You're simply trying to find out what their first, lower-priced offer is. It will not be their final offer, by the way. It's just the first round of negotiated offers. As a side note, if you do end up financing your purchase, the seller is always happy to accommodate you because they make even more money when you finance your purchase. Step number three, never settle for their first discounted price. Never appear happy or satisfied with their first reduced purchase price. Always look a little disappointed and say, really? Well, that's only blank amount off of the list price. I may have to shop around some more. And then go to step four, which is let silence do your talking. 
Remember when you were young and your mother said, silence is golden? Well, now was the time to be quiet and let your words sink into the salesman's mind. Eventually, they'll say something like this. Well, what did you have in mind? Or how much lower would I have to go to earn your business today? And then step number five, throw them a hard ball. The ball is back in your court again, so throw them a hard ball. Say something like, well, you've been very helpful today, and I'd like to do business with you. But unless I can purchase this item for blank percentage off, it might be 20%, 30%, 40% off the retail price, then I'm going to have to go to one of your competitors and, and see what they can offer me. I guarantee, guarantee you that the salesperson, manager, or owner of the business will try to earn your business that very day by giving you a counter offer somewhere between your offer and their previous one. By being bold and standing firm, you will soon be the proud owner of the item you wanted, along with some extra cash in your pocket or checking account, rather than theirs. Now is the time to realize that only you are responsible for employing these financial survival tips and strategies in your own life. Whether inflation goes up or down or the economy improves or gets worse, it's important to save as much as you can as often as you can. Just like the squirrels who store extra food in the fall to be ready and well-fed when the sparse winter months come around, you should do the same with your money. Store away a little extra money every chance you get, and come retirement time, you will be well prepared for the months and years ahead. Mark your calendars now for the next installment of our popular series, The Lighter Side of Finance. This upcoming episode will air later this month and is entitled Ponzi Schemerwitz. You will learn how to protect yourself and your nest egg from these too-good-to-be-true scammers and con artists. And be sure to friend our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel to gain exclusive access to our library of viral videos and the Truth About series. For more information on how to become a Checks and Balances Savvy Consumer and to download any of our free reports, visit the download section of our website. Also, be sure to get your copy of the Financial Freedom Wake-Up Call, a free report that teaches you how to plan for, save consistently, and invest wisely for a secure financial future. And while you're on the site, remember, your voice counts. Be sure to take this week's poll and visit our Tell Us What You Think section to share your opinion. Make your voice heard. And finally, remember that only you can control your financial future. You can succeed. You just need confidence and determination. I'm Matthew J. Reddick from Checks and Balances TV. Be sure to join us next week when we'll discuss baby boomers in peril, why their retirement plans are a bust. Until then, spend less, save more, believe in yourself, and make it happen.